Should we talk hollow body? Hollow body irons, what is this category? It's kind of like, bruh, aimed at everyone, but then they're a bit power batty as well. It's, is it the new cavity back? Like, why do we even have hollow body? But the reason I'm doing this video is I'm actually using the ZX4 here from Strixon, which is a hollow body iron. And what I'm enjoying, which they, out of my top three, which we'll talk about, you look at an iron that looks like semi players to nice, but then you get this big meaty kind of powerful bat, and not in all of them, but pow more powerful possibly than your true blades that they look like. My favorite hollow bodies. Let's see how they compare. Just to let you know, I'm paid by Strixon. They have no say in on the outcome on this video. They have not paid for this video. This is just me testing some clubs I've got my hands on compared to mine. Should be fun. I certainly don't see many of these sets in players' bags as I go around golf clubs. Still the traditional cavities and what have you. So I would still say this is a bit of an underdog, but it's something, like I say, I've gone this way and I'm really enjoying it. So if I put them all down by the ball to kick us off, the looks, when I look down this way, looks semi, let's say blade, classical looking. Um, my ZX4 is definitely the chunkiest. Then the Mizuno. MB, the next best looking. Quite nice line, certainly thinner than my ZX4. And then with the P770 tailor-made, really looking the cleanest and nicest, I would argue. And defining nicest is up to you. You know, I don't mind that that looks slightly bigger for what I want it to do, but if I wanted the ultimate blade looking with your kind of hollow body help, um, the tailor-made is just fantastic looking. It's, I mean, it doesn't look any different, really, or tiny different to a classic blade from this end. This end looks like there's more going on. So we'll start with the tailor-made P770, best looking. Then we'll follow with the MP20 HMB from Mizuno, very close to that tailor-made. And finish with the ZX4, which is definitely the chunkiest. Now this feels super, super nice. There's a slight clip to it, but in all purposes, it feels nice and responsive, not like power back crazy. We're looking at next to no offsets, fin top lines, nice rounded toe, very, very classic. And in the P range of irons, that is just fantastic looking. It does, like, you don't, this one is such a cheat club, I think in a good way. It's such a great combination of whatever we define as help plus beautiful looks. Even things like the groove pattern, I know it sounds silly, but looking at irons over years, you want the groove pattern to look a certain way, just all look really classy. And it does feel as solid as anything I've ever hit, to be fair. So how does that compare up to the Mizuno? Again, this has lovely clean lines next to no offset. You know, it's, you're getting hollow body help in such a player's package. So you see a little bit more face down by the ball. It looks like it's got a fraction more offset. Certainly not offensive. Oh, that's hard to tell the difference. I would say this one feels less clippy. Maybe a fraction more blady and softer, those terms. Sometimes I wonder if that's just because it's a Mizuno and Mizuno are in our heads with sound and feel like we all appreciate what they've done and it just kind of bleeds in maybe. So this one is a real bridging gap, I would say up to mine, which we'll show you in a second. Now as I'm making three shots of each club as well, a little note for you when you're testing, try not to get in any rhythms of hitting 20 in a row with one, 10 in a row with one. Keep mixing them up, two shots, three shots, even one shot if you can between them. Uh, it might just give you a better spread of data across your random patterns as rather than getting into any patterns with a, with a particular brand. And what I like about the Mizuno with the bridging, if you like, of kind of size and shape is it's where the TaylorMade looks slender and small, which might be too much for some, but perfect for others. This is a real medium bracket between a nice medium top line, nothing kind of sharp like their true blade. Um, and you see plenty of face down by the ball, which might give you confidence as well, but it's still not in any way looking chunky. And it just feels 
so Mizuno good. Like it does, it doesn't feel, I would say the TaylorMade feels a fraction clippier, like you are hitting something that's hollow, but tiny amounts. So my ZX4 next, so from this side it looks relatively bladey, but from here it doesn't. Look, it's a chunky bottom, medium top line, not huge amounts of offset, but this one definitely is the chunkier out of all of them. And the other thing you really notice when you put it down by the ball, so these are all seven irons, but this looks like a six. And we'll show you the numbers, but this one, the other two look relatively reality lofted. This one is jacked, and I know the numbers on this, and it will go further. This one feels medium soft. I would say it's the clippiest of all three. It is the most hollow body feeling and sounding. And if you think about what, what do I mean by that? Think about hybrid feels hollow, doesn't it? You know, it feels like there's this, sound rattling around inside that club it gives a different audible tone to a solid piece of metal like a blade this one definitely has that slight louder more towards the hybrid stage kind of audio tone definitely you do see strong lofts it's something you would want to think about with which ones you buy as in do you have a six iron or a five iron or stop at a seven because i mean this seven iron is flying like a six and it does sound, I mean, I like it. I've, I've been surprised with how much I'm liking these. I put them in as a bit of a joke because I've been working on distance and I've a few games, not really practice enough, but they are feeling very, very gameable. But I think these would appeal less to the better player where the other two would definitely, like I say, bridge that gap between, you know, even with the other two as well, I think if you wanted to go really blade in short and then blend, and same with this, if you wanted a six, oh, I got a seven iron, but if you had a six iron, which is pretty much like a five, and you wanted to go with this, and then you start going into more of the classic looking sizes and shapes as you come down the lofts or up the lofts, down the numbers, I could see how they would work for blending. Right, let's hit one more. Let's go and look at the tech of all three, see what they're all shouting about. So the P770 to start, it punches above its weight class is what it says, compact player zone, which it is no problem keeping up with the heavy hitters. So it's trying to bridge that combination. Forged hollow body construction, ultra thin face, design, uh, designed to enhance feel, distance and forgiveness, they're saying. True slot speed pocket on the bottom. They're trying to protect ball speeds across the face and then you get the compact head shape. So it's a real combination of kind of the best of both worlds. If we compare that to the Strixon, the ZX4, so it's hollow body forgiveness, so they call it extra forgiveness. Um, compact hollow shaping, That's, it's not as compact when you compare to the others. Wider sole, clean address view. I mean, it has got a clean address view, but it's slightly on the chunkier side. It's got a slightly longer blade length, which I do notice for they SM for a bit more forgiveness. And they're saying exceptional feel and extra distance. And I'll show you where the extra distance is coming from because there is extra distance. And then the MP20 HMB, it's a, a full set of performing hybrid irons is what Mizuno call them. So they're layers of feel, grain flow forged in Hiroshima, Japan from 1025E pure select mild steel carbon. It's a muscle back DNA. So the proportions top line offset transitions from the classic Mizunos, but then the added ball speed you get from that muscle back design. Also can mix with any MP20 set, and that's something to think about as well when it comes to blending these irons. And then they've also got a complex loft structure, specific construction. So the lofting is all set in place around the tungsten weight in the back of these. If you look at these numbers, what loft is coming out of these clubs? So here we go, here's the numbers. You can see the lowest spinning is the Strixon. Standard deviation, nice and tight. A little bit more on the ECU 100, uh, 195. Slightly um, more um, consistent strikes possibly in those. And you can see that's coming from the distance as well, 179, so it is longer than the other two clubs. But the reason being, is look at the loft that's being delivered. It's 23, and I can see that at address. The loft is not the same compared to 28, and then the, uh, the tailor-made coming in at 26, slightly less lofted. So these would be 6,000 revs outside. This would be 5,500 revs. Bearing in mind, the ZX4 is like a six sign, 5,500 revs to so 6,000 that would get outside. 
and this is kind of a seven and a half to almost six iron as well. So this getting above 6,000 outside with real um, grass interactions. Uh, the spin numbers are exactly where you'd expect, and you can see the ball speed jumped. I mean, the Mizuno and the P790 are very, very similar in their delivery, and then the ZX4 stands out as being longer, coming from the lower loft. I wouldn't see any of those being better than the other. They're kind of doing what they're expected to do. Right, little game to finish, but we'll use all three. Again, I'm not really seeing a winner or a loser here. I'm seeing three clubs that appeal for different tick boxes of what you want. 180, so it's a nice hit with those two, and I have to take it off a little bit with this one. Obviously, I could use my eight, but I quite like trying to manufacture shots, which I would do on the course with that as well. I would hit hard sevens and little ones, so let's put them in the same bracket. So on the 10th hole here, Pebble Beach, beautiful little green, pin up the left. Right, Taylor made to kick us off. Oh, I feel so sweet, this club. It really does feel good. Just keep filtering. Oh yeah, that's a good shot, because it should go a bit right now. Take that all day long. Get one more with this club. Just enjoy it, innit, to be fair. Little bit clean, that one, so not the world's best strike. Might come up front, more middle front. Yeah, and then just release on. I mean, they're two solid shots. I really do feel like I could do anything with this club. It feels true in what I put in comes out, which is exactly what you'd want, really. Right, Mizuno next. Again, this is pretty much the number for this club. Slightly two grooves low, it'll come up front edge, but if it's the right club, if I just strike it, it's done well with the release on. Exactly the same shapes. The Mizuno and the TaylorMade are so, so close in everything. Oh, I've just pulled it. I did strike that one better. You'll see that one flying a bit further up, look, but it's going to catch the left-hand trap. Just slightly pulled it. Good hit. Aiming at that pin probably isn't the best play, to be fair. All right, ZX4 to finish. Definitely going to have to just play quite an easy one of this. And that's the thing I do look, you know, I'm looking at a strong loft there. Again, I would go to an 8-iron if I was playing because short's better than long. I just like doing this as well to show you, obviously, that these clubs... When you're looking at like for like, it literally comes down to the loft number. Everything else is so, so similar. Again, I would still play this shot on the course. If I'd come up short all day, I'd definitely choose this one. So have I taken too much off that? Let's have a look. No, it's good distance. Just faded it a bit more into the right portion, not close to the hole, but pin eye-ish. And again, I don't think it's a problem hitting a softer shot with this club. You've just got to understand a little bit of your lofts and what that might do to the outcome of the shot. So I tried to start that left and move it back. Yeah, it's a pretty decent shot. Just soft. I mean, that's literally on the tailor-made ball, isn't it? Look how much lower it comes in. See, it just releases up the green a bit more. So these are all options I would use when playing. Um, hard eight's going to land and stop, and I might be worried that it lands on the front of the green. So these are decisions that you would make in that gaming environment, which are really good when you're testing, if you do play like this. So to the pin, I was averaging 20 foot, four inches with the TaylorMade. I didn't change the club for his. The last two here, 23 foot with my club, so the TaylorMade wins. And with the Mizuno, it's 12, uh, sorry, it's 11 yards, 12 foot standard deviation. So really out of those two shots, obviously it's not a big enough data capture. But out of that little fun test, TaylorMade coming out three foot closer than the next best, which was the Ashruxun, uh, which obviously I game, so it had an advantage and didn't take it. Um, three really good clubs. It's an interesting category. I think it's one that's maybe not looked at enough. It's certainly one I'm really enjoying. How long I'll stay with it, well, time will tell. I actually quite like the flight of them, the stronger flight. I quite like the sound. So that's why I've gone more towards this one, I think, if I was with these two, I would stay maybe more in a classic cavity back, possibly, because you would wonder what the difference is. But I think the difference just comes from two things. This one of them's really silly. They look great in the back of your bag, because they've just got this almost, people can't see that they've got a bit of help. And two, they look great down by the ball while offering whatever this help is that you're after in launches or if you think it's on off, off center hit. I think they're three good clubs. I can't really pick, I think. One appeals for the more classic look, one is bridging the gap, and one of them is just a powerful thing, which um, arguably is a little crazy, <laughs> but fun. <laughs>